What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the side, well, you've come to the right place. About uh, a month ago, you probably heard about some dispute between YouTube and the Actman, going under the hashtag Justice for Actman. Everyone was talking about it, everyone was rallying behind the guy. Well, you hear anything about it now? Probably not. No one's talking about Justice for Ackman now, not even the Ackman himself. And I'd say it ain't even because people lost interest and moved on, but rather because of Ackman's own hubris and ego. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna be looking at Justice for Ackman from all angles, from the Bruin Storm, the Rise, and the Fall. So, let's get on with it. There's a YouTuber called Quantum TV, a tech YouTuber. He talks about mostly televisions that I don't even think he owns to be frank, but he also does game reviews as well because he made a review on Elden Ring. To sum it up, his main complaints was that the game was difficult to the point of it being unfair, said the fan base is toxic, the graphics were bad, and said the controls were clunky. These of course were complaints that were detested and debunked by the Elden Ring community. One such member of the community who responded to this review addressing and responding to what they believed to be misinformation was a youtuber named Misha. They made a video on it however it was temporarily removed to address a comment that Quantum TV posted to the video. Mischief has featured Quantum TV in a number of his videos and I guess that got under his skin because Quantum had this to say. You literally stole my video footage with an illegal video downloader. He elaborates more on this at the end. It is a violation of YouTube terms of service to use third-party software to acquire someone's videos and you're risking your channel with stunts like this. Now right off the bat we've got something to clear up here. Now I'm no lawyer but I've done some research regarding the matter and YouTube themselves says you are not allowed to access, reproduce, download, distribute, transmit, broadcast, display, sell, license, alter, modify, or otherwise use any part of the service or any content except as expressly authorized by the service or with prior written permission from YouTube and if applicable, the respective rights holders. So, basically, according to YouTube's own terms of service, it would appear that you technically can't download someone's videos to use in your own. However, it should be pretty obvious that this rule really isn't enforced. Many YouTubers, such as myself, are constantly downloaded videos for use in their own content, and YouTube doesn't really do a damn thing about it. It's the kind of thing where, yes, it is technically against TOS, but you're not really at risk or anything. Take this video down and remake it with all the stolen footage and without my life in your thumbnail. I own the sole copyright to the Quantum TV brand and all of its imagery assets. Failure to remove the stolen content will result in a takedown. I've already formally filed against you, but don't want a copyright strike you. I just want my assets removed, so I'm giving you a heads up. I don't mind criticism, just don't go stealing my videos from my channel. That ain't gonna fly. Nah, I think it goes without saying, but uh, that's not how copyright works. Just because you quote unquote own the imagery or brand, it doesn't mean that you could just strike down whatever has your content in it. There's this thing called fair use, transformative content, you know? I know that fair use can be a gray area sometimes, but this is a clear cut case of someone transforming the content. They're transforming it from a review on Elden Ring to a review on, well, your review. It's been transformed from a review to a deconstruction. You may not like it, but at the end of the day, it's fair game. At the end of it all, it's plain to see what's going on here. What Quantum is doing is essentially bullying a smaller YouTuber because he tore his video to shreds. It's immature, and frankly, it's nothing that the community has respect for. In another video, he then showed screenshots of Quantum TV being a homophobe. You have LGBT kissing in church, but we're bigots for rejecting this hateful content. Ugh, why weren't you a pulse victim shaking my head? The world would be a better place without you, hashtag boycott, hashtag the LGBT of us. This is apparently in response to a Last of Us tweet where two girls apparently they kiss in a church. So, um, I don't know, maybe that's just a bit of dark humor. I mean, I've been in commentary for a while. This sort of stuff, it's, um, it's not uncommon, so... I don't know, given the benefit of the doubt. Not agreeing with someone and or being angry is one thing. I wasn't okay with it either. Wishing death upon someone is another story. I seriously question your sanity. And what does Quantum say to respond to that? They deserve it. The world is better off without them forcing their lifestyle on it. All right then. And he just absolutely goes off of an absolutely disgusting bigotry against all non-gay gamers. You even have an LGBT profile pic 
Uh, where's the straight pride flag? You disgracefully put your sexuality before the gamers. All this did was dive your sales big time. I hope it was worth it, scumbag. Absolute hatred for straight people at E3 from Naughty Dog. Disgusting way to divide gamers. Keep your sexuality to yourself. Disgusting bigotry divides the community again. Way to go, Neil. You're a scumbag. Keep your sexuality to yourself. We don't want this in gaming. You just made the list. Whatever that means. You know, I, I agree with John here. I question this guy's sanity. Uh, Quantum then claimed he was hacked, which Mischief called into question due to a Discord post. I'll let him explain right here. When Review Tag USA was going through his Twitter showcasing all of the homophobic tweets of his, the account just so happened to be deleted. Now, how did Quantum respond to all of this? He claimed he was hacked. Because as we all know, when your account is hacked, the hackers will help you out by deleting all of the evidence, rather than continue to post what you claim is their homophobia. Even though it's blatantly your account and you were not hacked. He was not, and I actually have proof of that. What I have on stream right now is a Discord message from the day before he decided to claim he was hacked, in which he claims he merely just hadn't used those accounts in a while. I would love to hear the explanation of how the day before he claimed he was hacked, he had simply not used the account in a while, but then the next day his account was supposedly hacked. There's something which doesn't quite add up here. Along with that, the supposed fake accounts he's referring to, aka his own personal Twitter account, was directly fucking linked on his YouTube account before he tried to bullshit his way out of this. As seen through the Wayback Machine, something that you cannot edit. It only shows you the page you saved with no way to edit them. So there is yet another hole in his claim. Why did you first of all have your Twitter linked if it was hacked? And why is it that you stated your Twitter was hacked, using the homophobic tweets as evidence of that and a random video on YouTube impersonation accounts, when both of those don't at all prove you were hacked? He also uses some unhinged Facebook posts made by Quantum around the same time, which, you know, is pretty interesting. You have two accounts making the same posts. Th did that get hacked too? It's like, what's, what's going on here? I'll let you read them if you want, but it's, it's, it's really unhinged, you know. And to be fair, I guess it is possible the accounts got hacked, but... It's just kind of hard to believe, you know. But alright, those posts were made like three years ago. I think it's ridiculous to hold someone accountable for something that they said a few years ago. I mean, people can change pretty fast, right? Surely he's a little less unhinged now, right? Well, Mischief uses an article he wrote, looks like it was on a personal website, about nine months ago at the time of the video as proof that he hasn't really changed. I've read the article and I will say it doesn't paint a good picture for the guy. The problem is, it's so poorly written, it makes him sound like a deranged loser. Lunatic. I'm sure he could have made some alright points here and there if he made more than one draft, but this just reads like the mumblings of a psycho. The companies like Disney will have a gay day at a children's amusement park going as far as holding LGBT marriage proposal, despite spelled with an I, marriage coming from religious groups that condemn gay marriage because it violates the religious aspect it came from, but of course, the religion ain't exclusive to their lifestyles, so it's gotta go, right? At every turn, Democrats have tried turning America into an open border China. They are factually... Modern day domestic terrorists think I'm being too harsh, their actions are my reason for saying so. They target jobs, kids, families, health, religion, constitutional freedoms, basic freedoms, and everything American about us that makes us America. And don't even get me started on the way they used 60,000 treacherous troops to install the sitting quote unquote president after changing votes in the voting software to secure Biden as president. Like, I don't even think Biden legitimately won the election, and even I'm kind of iffy about this. I think you can question the action of corporations. I think you can criticize political parties. Hell, I even think you can question whether the election results are legitimate. Because frankly, I do myself. But like, it doesn't paint a good picture for you when you can't write to save your life. The act man made a video on April 10th responding to several people who didn't like Elden Ring. Notably, he responds to Quantum TV's review and brings up mischief and how he was essentially being threatened by Quantum. Apparently, this guy Quantum TV made an Elden Ring review that he later deleted. The People saw it was filled with terrible takes and made fun of it, like you do on the internet. One of these videos happened to be from a 17-year-old British guy named Mischief, and his response video triggered Quantum TV so far off the edge that he threatened to copyright strike a minor in a different country for criticizing him. 
Otherwise, there's not too much to say about the video. Much like Mischief, he breaks down why Quantum TV's review was bad, and there ain't really nothing too much to it. Until Quantum TV attempted to strike the video down. Now this failed, but it got people talking. Quantum TV tried to take down my Elden Ring hot takes video claiming copyright infringement. Unfortunately for him, YouTube actually knows what fair use is and rejected his takedown request. Get F nerd, stop being such a C. Now Quantum TV claims that YouTube themselves advised him to copyright claim that video. He says in a post, It was YouTube support who recommended I copyright claim your video because you re-uploaded clips of my original deleted video long after I deleted it from my channel. Naturally that means it was piracy and could be copyright claimed by the original owner or so they claimed. After all, how else does one upload another user's content long after they erase it? I gave him a scolding for bad advice and will seek other options against your piracy of my my content again not how copyright works he then posts a conversation he had with I'm guessing YouTube staff you realize following YouTube support advice on copyright claims to remove reuploads failed me and as a result I'm being labeled as a copyright abuser right the other guy says that I cannot answer for now. But yeah, I have doubts about this. I doubt YouTube would recommend someone straight up copyright claim a video. Seems to me that's just a lawsuit waiting to happen. I'd love to see the conversations between Quantum and, you know, the YouTube employee because there's no way they straight up said, yeah, just copyright claim him, you know, whatever. Most likely Quantum just misinterpreted what was said. Now, apparently this ain't the first time Quantum TV did something like this. He's apparently tried to copyright claim many other channels falsely, but this time he was going up against someone with 1.5 million subscribers, so it spawned a fair bit of discussions. Everyone's eyes were on the case now. After posting a video detailing Quantum TV's long history of fraudulent copyright claims, two days later, the act man claimed that Quantum TV called his mother. I can confirm that Quantum TV is threatening me and my family with doxing and violence. Even reached out to my mother saying, we wouldn't want families to get hurt or involved in this. I wish I was joking. If we see you, Quantum, we shoot on sight. Shares the messages his mom gave him. Quantum TV then confirms this is indeed what happened and even provides the call that he recorded. Now, in fairness to Quantum, he explains that he originally discussed the matter with the act man over Discord, but Quantum didn't like the way he was talking. I'll let him explain that for us. He reaches out via Discord, supposedly willing to have a conversation. When that conversation didn't get the result that he was looking for, he then basically plastered, hey, I'm just here to let you know the, the ramifications. I was just trying to let you know the ramifications. I'll clean your clock. You better be prepared to sell that red wedding ring on your fucking finger. Your house, your car, your keys, your kids. You... Once, he's tr once we try to reach out to him and it goes sideways, I still reach out to him again. Now, I'm trying to find Act Man. So what, what would you do as a human being if you're trying to find somebody who is hiding behind a stage name, the Act Man? Well, you're going to look into them. It's not real hard to find him at all. You can Google him right now and you can get all of the same information I did. It's not hard, okay? There's no law being broken and everything I found on him was public record at that point, okay? So once you have public record, I literally call the first number associated with his legal name. The first number I called was disconnected. Well, that's not going to work. I need to contact him. So he then tried to get into contact with the act man directly. I guess he was trying to get to his phone number, which pretty creepy like you have a method of communicating with this guy why do you need to get him on the phone like you think that'll make him more receptive to you that'll be more willing to see your point of view if you just track him down like come on now to be fair there was no phone number that was actually published so as for whether or not it was actually a doxing i don't know but obviously it's still not a good thing it's obviously still pretty creepy right well while he was trying to get into contact with the act man he managed to call his mother he even provides the recording of the call now interestingly we don't hear the mother so i don't know it it is possible that the call could be faked. In any case, as far as I know, a call did happen. Ackman says it happened. Quantum said it happened. So I'm kind of left to assume that it happened. And I don't think I need to say this, but that is just a bridge too far, man. You don't go out of your way to get someone's personal information, you know, their phone number, unless they give it to you, unless they want you to do so. Quantum claims he had no intention of bringing family into it, which I, mean, I can give him the benefit of the doubt on that one, but you still shouldn't have been trying to track him down. And by the way, this is the crustiest call I've ever heard, like for some for some reason, Quantum explains the situation to Ackman's mom as if she'd have any understanding as to what's going on. Like, dude, she's probably a boomer who has no idea how YouTube works. I don't know. I mean, copyright abuse, as he uses third-party software to download my content off of my channel and then repost it after I delete it. Piracy isn't a victimless crime, as we know. I mean... 
Around this time, the Act Man released two videos, one called Copyright Abuse featuring Quantum TV, basically a collage of Quantum TV's colorful past on the internet, and then the Dark Age of YouTube, which was basically how even when this evidence was presented to YouTube, they refused to ban him from the site. We'll dig into that later. Now, the Dark Age of YouTube would be struck down because of nudity and sexual content, despite there being very little nudity and sexual content in the video, if there was any at all. A lot of people point to this as YouTube defending Quantum, or there being some sort of corruption in the YouTube corporation, but honestly, I don't buy. YouTube's just a broken platform. That's it. There's no corruption. The platform just sucks. You can criticize it for that, but if you want to make accusations of corruption, you're gonna have to do better than a video getting struck down for a dumb reason, right? You're gonna need well, actual evidence. As a result of YouTube refusing to ban Quantum TV, the Act Man would make a tweet that would really propel this thing to new heights, but ironically began the downfall of Act Man's crusade against YouTube. I am excited to announce a new series of videos I'll be making on YouTube called Doxing Adventures with Act Man. In it, I'll be doxing and harassing the family members of YouTube employees and other content creators. It's sure to have lots of family fun, ha ha ha. Now, the joke here is obvious. YouTube refuses to punish Quantum TV for many things that clearly go against TOS, most notably calling his family members, right? Threatening the safety of him and his family, so if Quantum TV can mess with Act Man and his personal life, well, Ackman should be able to do the same to YouTube and their employees. Obviously a joke, but YouTube didn't like it one bit. The channel is officially demonetized. As discussed, your YouTube partner program suspension followed your now-deleted tweet threatening to dox the families of YouTube employees and creators. We don't take these decisions lightly, and want you to know we're taking your concerns just as seriously. We'll keep working with you directly on this. I like the way they worded this. They claimed he threatened to dox employees when the tweet itself was an obvious joke. Here's what I'll say. Should Act Man have been demonetized? No, obviously not. Should he have seen it coming? Yes, absolutely. And he's a moron for thinking he could have gotten away with this. Here's the thing, YouTube's pretty much backed into a corner here, and they're gonna look for any opportunity to make you look bad. If that means deliberately misinterpreting a tweet as a threat, so be it. I don't agree with it, I absolutely I don't, but you should have seen it coming. Following this, the hashtag Justice for Act Man began trending, bolstered by the many large creators talking about it. This movement lasted for like a week. Tops. The video many rallied around was the aforementioned copyright abuse featuring Quantum. Now, I won't really get into the down and dirty of it. If you really want that, I think Willie Mac explains it way better than I could have ever. But to keep it brief, it's a video that, while bringing up many good points here and there, contributes a lot of misinformation. He brings up Quantum TV's homophobic rants and his weirder posts that make him sound like a schizophrenic. And look, I'll give a hot take here. Most of these posts are a few years old. Don't get me wrong, they're bad tweets, and frankly, they're unhinged, but most of them are really old. The most recent cases of him being a complete nut job are oracles he wrote like seven months ago on a website that most people probably don't even know exists. And look, I'm gonna give a hot take here, I could care less about someone going off on a homophobic rant or making unhinged articles about TV shows promoting Satanism or whatever. In the grand scheme of things, I don't know, I'm not too worked up about it. I've always held the belief that if there are people who hold unhinged views, you don't kick them off, you debunk them. Just as they should be allowed to express their unhinged thoughts, everyone can and should rebuke them. And I feel like there's something to be said about the act man calling for Quantum to be banned over this sort of speech while complaining about getting demonetized because he made a joke doxing YouTube employees. I don't know, I feel like there's a hint of hypocrisy there. By the way, the act man has made several tweets with derogatory slurs in them as well. I find it rich that he's putting Quantum TV on the spot for tweets that he made two years ago when he's done the exact same thing and used the exact same language that Quantum TV has. Now, the act man does provide a screenshot alleging that these are still views that Quantum holds. Quantum TV is still the same person that believes these things. He still thinks the gays are out to get him and force him to have anal sex. I don't want to participate in the anal sex the liberal people tell me to. And if you take the time to read on through it, it's absolutely unhinged. One problem though, it is completely unverified. It originated on a Reddit, there's no alternate screenshots, and no one in the server remembers seeing it. 
And honestly, I question whether or not Actman really believes what Quantum TV said is truly banworthy, right? Like, are you calling these two-year-old posts out because you're genuinely concerned about the image of the platform, or are you just doing it because you want to see him banned? He also alleges that Quantum ban evaded. Apparently, this guy has four channels, but one of them was banned at some point. However, the channel was reinstated after he filed an appeal. Again, people can explain it better than I can. We know Quantum is evading a previous ban because he admitted himself on multiple occasions back in 2018. But I asked the court if his channel wasn't banned. Then all these posts from 2018 were faked, right? Problem with this argument is that Actman is just wrong. Quantum is not ban evading. Yes, those posts are real. Yes, his channel Quantum Apotheosis was banned at one point. But Quantum has since appealed his ban and won, reinstating his channel, meaning he's not ban evading. We know this because in an old video shouting out Quantum's previously banned channel, there's a link in the description that directs the same channel which has been rebranded to Next Gen Gamers. But this whole dig with he's ban evading is misinformation through and through. He also accuses Quantum of using Patreon to scam people. Apparently, Quantum advertises TV calibration settings in his Patreon or whatever. The problem is, they're really bad. And he's been using YouTube memberships and Patreon to scam people into thinking they're buying TV settings from a certified calibrator. So, this is basically what it's supposed to look like. What Quantum wants to do and sell people looks like this. <laughs> God. Wow. Uh, oh, he says he's a master calibrator, which is no such thing. YouTube, he's scamming people. He's using your website to scam people. He apparently uses this to prove that Quantum is a scammer, which I don't think that's what a scam is. Like if I go to a restaurant that claims to have the best apple pie in town and I get a slice and it's absolute garbage, sure, I might feel ripped off, but at the end of the day, I got a product. It's not a scam, just over marketing. Overall, there's a lot of mistakes in this video, and I think this video is a huge blunder on Actman's port. Quantum TV, from what we've seen, is a complete loony and has no place on that side. Let me make that clear. Anyone who sends fraudulent claims to take down videos that they don't like should be absolutely kicked off. I don't really care if you're a bad person who makes bad videos. At the end of the day, it doesn't really affect anyone. But false copyright strikes absolutely do, and it's something we should have little patience for as a community. But when you make false claims and allegations, you leave this guy in out. You give him the chance to say, this guy is misrepresenting me, lying about me, whatever, he should not be trusted. And that's what happened here. Willie Mac said it best when he said, This conversation should have started and ended with YouTube's copyright system and implementing a way to punish people who abuse it or use it to intimidate others. Now, personally, I think this whole thing took a nosedive when Tommy C got involved. Now, Tommy C kind of poked and prodded at, at the act man throughout this whole thing. He had a lot of criticisms both on Twitter and on his live show. This specific tweet stood out to many. When I think about it now, the act man tried to get Quantum TV kicked off YouTube legitimately. I mean, Quantum TV intimidated and harassed his family. His ego could not handle that he didn't have the power to get him kicked. He then made a risky video and it backfired. A sad, true story. To which Actman responded, You, the way you phrase this is intellectually dishonest. This wasn't about ego, this was how YouTube could overlook mountains of evidence regardless of how many people provided it. But nice narrative you're trying to spin. But ironically, Tommy C would be proven right when he posted a clip of J Station, who apparently had a role to play in this whole mess. Not even gonna get into that. The 3 a.m challenge today we are calling ant-man's mom at 3 a.m oh my god what is she gonna do guys let's smash the like button right now guys let's get it all right guys we got mommy ant-man's phone number right here i am so scared to do this okay we're gonna call her it's calling right now okay i don't know if she's gonna pick up hello hello is this ant-man's mom who's calling what up bitch Basically, Tommy C included a video of J Station calling Actman's mom in one of his streams. Well, pretending to. Tommy C put this in his stream, and the Actman actually called for Tommy C to be kicked off the platform, making fun of him as he did so. While hilarious, unfortunately, now Tommy C has uploaded content from a user with a previous restriction, and therefore YouTube is well within their rights to take action against him and this video. Congratulations, you played yourself. Not only that, but the Actman contacted Nicholas Diorio, joking that he 
he'd be giving Tommy C a strike if he had anything to say about it. And this is where I think the whole Justice for Ackman thing died. This is where everyone decided to let the thing rot. Because while the Ackman fumbled his way through the ordeal time and time again, at the very least, he had good intentions. But here he proved that he was just as bad as the person he criticized. He pushed against YouTube's broken rules only to seemingly use them against someone that he doesn't like. Quantum TV tried to silence people who made videos on him, and that's basically what Ackman is doing here. You cannot claim to be fighting against YouTube's oppressive rules while using them to try and silence people that you don't like. If you claim to be fighting for everyone, that truly means everyone, including people who criticize you. And that, my friends, is why this died. Through all the hurt and pain, it all went to waste simply because the act man proved himself a hypocrite who doesn't truly stand by what he said. So yeah, I don't really know how to end this. That's the story of how Justice for Act Man died. From humble beginnings with mischief to its build-up, climax, and immediate death. If only we had someone who could accuse the entirety of YouTube of being pedophiles. Maybe then we'd have made a little more progress. But alas, what can you really do? Yeah, I really don't know what else to say here. I'm pretty much done. Well, that's all I've got for this stick. Now, you guys do old Jackie a favor and keep it groovy. Thank you. Thank you very much.